Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. First and foremost, I greet you all in the name of Christ our Lord, who is Supreme King, Lord, God, and Madhani Alam, Savior of the world. Today is a glorious day indeed, for by God's grace we will attempt to explain and share one of the most splendorous feasts of our church, Ba'alat Tamkat. Ba'alat Tamkat is a great feast in commemoration of the baptism of Christ our Lord. Simply put, it's the baptism of Christ our Lord by Johannes Metmek, John the Baptist. Tumket, or baptism, is one of the seven sacraments of the Tawaido Orthodox Church. It's also the mother of all the sacraments. It's the beginning of our journey to heaven. It's important for us to get some clarification. When we say Ba'alat Imkat, what does that really mean? Ba'al or Ba'al means feast. Imkat means baptism. Feast of baptism, referring to the baptism of Christ our Lord and Savior and God. Throughout the year, the Tawaido Orthodox Church celebrates 18 feasts of our Lord. Nine are major and the other nine are minor feasts of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ba'alat Imkat is considered to be one of the nine major feasts of Christ our Lord. To understand this feast, let's go to the source, Metzhaf Kudus, the Holy Bible, for clarity. In the Gospel of Mark, when Gelawi Marokos, chapter 1, from verse 4 until 9, we find the following. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, and whom I am well pleased. So, what significant points can we take from what we have read? Number one, St. John the Baptist, Johannes Metmek, was preaching and baptizing in the wilderness. Number two, he shows Johannes Metmek humility by saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. True followers of Christ, true followers of God, my brothers and sisters, ser the servants, the apostles, the holy naviat, the prophets, the saints of the church continuously showed humility to Hatana, which God Almighty, I pray, which I pray God will instill in our hearts. Number three, Christ went to John to be baptized by him. Number four, Christ our Lord went 
to the river Jordan and was baptized. It was in John that went to Jesus. It was Christ our Lord that went to John, Johannes Metmek, to be baptized by him. Number five, and immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is outstanding indeed. During the baptism of Christ, the incarnate God, who is creator of the universe, an amazing thing happened. Theophany, the manifestation of the triune God. Ab, when, women, first, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ on earth, specifically in the river Jordan, the Holy Spirit descending upon him like a dove, and the Father speaking from above the cloud. You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This great event took place on the 11th day of Tredegh's calendar, or January 19th in the Gregorian calendar. The feast of baptism is great indeed. In one hand, Christ is baptized for our benefit. Secondly, the manifestation of the Holy Trinity took place. It is for this reason that the scholars leak out of the church have used the term theophany to describe the feast of the baptism of Christ. Many times, however, the term epiphany is vastly used. Let's quickly look at both terms. To be clear, both epiphany and theophany are derived from Greek, not gz. Epiphany, epi, means above. Fania means manifestation. Epiphany, manifestation from above. Theophany, theo or theos means God. And fania means manifestation. Theophany, the manifestation of God. This is truly remarkable. The manifestation of the triune God for the first time occurred in the New Testament when Johannes Metemek baptized Christ our Lord in the River Jordan. For this reason, the Mergetas of our church eloquently sing the hymn of St. Yared during the annual feast of Theophany when celebrating. Here's what they say. Naamen baab wa naamen bawad wa naamen bimen fasqudus am mariam za tawadda afkiro chiana metsahabin zenebiat sabakulana be yordanos tatamka kama yifatsum kullu hig wa astar aye gahade in english which means we believe in the father we believe in the son and we believe in the holy spirit for our love he came and was born from mary he whom the prophets proclaimed to us was baptized at Jordan so that he might fulfill the entire law. And he openly revealed. Glory be to God for St. Yared Kudus Yared's hymns. So what does this all mean? The divine God revealed himself through Christ for the love of mankind. And for this reason, our Holy Fathers refer to the time from Christmas, le Dutu, until the Lenten fast as Astario or Zemena Astario, or Era of Revelation. When referring to Zemena Astario, or Era of Revelation, the following festivities are encompassed. Number one, his nativity, le Dutu, Ba'ala le Dutu. The unapproachable and unseen God permitted himself to be revealed by his incarnation. When Gelawi Johannes, the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 14, it says, Kal Siga Kone, and the word became flesh. Number two, Gizratu Ba'ala Gizret, his circumcision. The Logos, the word, Alexavir, creator of the universe, permitted his circumcision to take place on the sixth day of Tere. However, a great mystery occurred during this time. During this event, the instruments for circumcision all melted, turning to liquid. This took place to confirm the blood of the Messiah, the Moshiach, 
was not to be spilled until Good Friday. Thus, he was not circumcised by any man. This is a revelation of his godly, divine power. Thirdly, his baptism. The manifestation of the Holy Trinity, as we said before, Theophany. This occurred immediately after the baptism of Christ our Lord. Number four, Cana of Galilee, Cana Zagalila. On the 13th day of Tr, Emmanuel Amaniel, God with us, manifested his divine power by changing water to wine in a wedding in the town of Cana of Galilee, Cana Zagalila. Christ, our Lord, who is fully God and fully man, did not require baptism. He is pure and holy and sinless. His baptism was an act of love and an example for us to adhere to. By going to the river Jordan and permitting his creation, Kudus Johannes St. John, the Baptist, to baptize him is profoundly a display of utmost humility. All of this, not for his benefit, but for our benefit and salvation. Our Lord taught regarding Timket or baptism, and he is still teaching. Let's listen to him. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 16, we find the following. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 5. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 until 20. Adhering to Christ's teaching, our church still continues to baptize by invoking the name of the Holy Trinity. Ab well woman first Glory be to God for his beautiful gifts. In the Gospel of Mark, when Gelawi Marokos chapter 1 verse 9, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Christ was baptized in the River Jordan. But why was that? I mean, many rivers and pools existed in the time of Christ. That's quite interesting. For example, the pool of Bethsaida, Solomon's pool, etc. But why did Christ, our Lord, choose to get baptized specifically in that river, the River Jordan? According to the teaching of our Tawahedo Church, it was so Christ could destroy the servitude letter of Adam and Eve. To understand this, we need to go back in time for a sec. After their banishment from the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve continued in sorrow, always recalling their former state. Satan, taking advantage of the situation, visited Adam and Eve, promising he would rid their pain and sorrow and grant them happiness so long as they signed a binding oath to him. Adam and Eve submitted to the devil's trickery and signed an oath on a solid stone. Satan threw one part in the river Jordan and the other one in Sheol or hell. The oath read as follows, Adam gavru le diablos, hewan amatu le diablos. In English, this means Adam, servant of Satan, and Eve, servant of Satan. They did this not intentionally, but thinking he would provide them peace and happiness as he had promised. If the evil one came in his original form, 
Surely this would not be possible. Therefore, he disguised himself as a caring and gentle person to manipulate them. Remember, even St. Paul says in his epistle the following, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Quite interestingly, St. Paul also says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. My brothers and sisters, for this reason, the Tawaido Orthodox Church teaches us that Christ was baptized specifically in the River Jordan. When he was baptized in the River Jordan, by St. John the Baptist, Johannes Metmet, the stone melted by his divine power, thus erasing the oath. The second part of the stone was destroyed by Christ on Good Friday after his crucifixion when he went into Sheol to save Adam and his children. Both stones containing the oath were destroyed, thus Christ restored Adam. Glory be to God. God is truly awesome. Not too long after his baptism, Christ began his ministry. And according to the Gospel of Luke chapter 3 verse 23, Jesus started his ministry at the age of 30. Our Lord was baptized at the age of 30. But why not age 25 or 29 or 31? To find out, we need to go back to the first man created. Our scholars, the Likaunt of our church and the fathers of our church say, Adam was not created as an infant or a teenager, but as a 30 years of age young adult. Christ paralleled Adam in so many ways except for sin. Fulfilling his promise at the appointed time, 5.5 days, 5,500 years, the second Adam, Christ our Lord, came to earth, fulfilling all the law, even unto death, for the salvation of mankind. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 22 says, For in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So what do we really gain from baptism? Number one, through baptism, we receive remission of sin. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. The book of Acts chapter 22, verse 16. And secondly, through baptism, we put on Christ. For as many of you, as were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 until 28. Thirdly, through baptism, we receive new life. Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death, that, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Fourthly, through baptism, we inherit the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Gospel of John, Wengelau Johannes, chapter 3, verse 5. Ba'alat Imkat, or Theophany, is unlike any other feast of the church. It's quite unique and vibrant. To commemorate this celebration, the tabots, Ark of Covenant of each respective churches, are carried out from the altar and place in tents erected near open bodies of water. That's quite beautiful. The tabots 
remain overnight while the clergy recite prayers, solot, mahalit service, and divine liturgy, kadasir. Carrying out of the Tabot, Ark of the Covenants, to a nearby pool or river symbolically represents Christ when he came to the river Jordan to be baptized by Johannes Metmek. Early morning on the 11th day of Tr, the clergy gather around the pool, conducting prayers, tzolot, and hymns, mazmur, glorifying God. At the conclusion of prayers, the kahanat, or papas, a high-ranking clergy, bless the water with the cross kudus meskan, saying, Ahadu ab kudus, ahadu wal kudus, ahadu utu menfas kudus. Only the Father is holy. Only the Son is holy. Only the Holy Spirit is holy. After the blessing, the clergy begins sprinkling the faithful or the mitmenan with holy water. Annually, our Tawahidu Orthodox Church reenacts the baptism of Christ with great splendor and honor. Praise be to God for granting us the gift of baptism. I would like to clarify something here. Commemorating Ba'alat annually by washing ourselves using blessed water is not to be confused as second baptism or dagmai timket. No. Baptism is only once and never repeated. During Theophany Feast, we drink the holy water blessed by clergy, wash our faces with it, and we use it to bless objects. Sometimes there's a misconception that we are being baptized again. This is untrue. Here's what Kudus Paulos St. Paul says regarding this matter. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4 until 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope if you're calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Prior to Theophany, on the eve of Baalit Imket, our Tawahdu Orthodox Church observes a one-day fast referred to as Tzomagahat or Paramount Fast. This one-day fast is strictly adhered to with great anticipation of celebrating the festivity of Theophany. Gahad, God's manifestation, his revelation, which he permitted for us during his baptism. Brothers and sisters, let us all fast earnestly with almsgiving, dedication, and steadfastness. May what we have heard be engraved in our hearts. May the Lord forgive our transgressions and through his mercy grant peace, health, unity, and love for the entire globe. May the blessing of this great feast, Ba'alat Imkat, Theophany, be with you all. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now unto all ages and all ages. Amen. <laughs>